Welcome back. This is Mrs. Rewrite with Advanced Algebra. Today's lesson is 1.4, Solving Two Steps and Multi-Step Equations. All right, so we're going to go over some more properties. The addition property of equality, when you add the same thing to both sides, the equation stays balanced. The subtraction property of equality, when you subtract the same thing from both sides, the equation stays balanced. The multiplication property of equality, um, if you multiply by the same thing on both sides, the equation will remain balanced. The division property of equality, as long as you divide by the same thing on both sides, it stays balanced as long as that thing is not zero, because anything divided by zero is not possible. You can't have something out of nothing, um, so it would be undefined. And that's why it cannot include zero. The commutative property of addition. All right, so commute, commute, like you're commuting to work, you're moving. Your parents commute to work, they drive to work. That means that they are moving. So that's when the order changes, okay? So A plus B equals B plus A. Addition is commutative. You can do it in a different order. So that's just changing around the order. The commutative property of multiplication, same thing. You're commuting to work. You're moving around. So A times B equals B times A. That order changed, okay? So commutative is when the order changes. Associative is when the parentheses move. Commutative is when the order of the letters actually changes, when, the, when that moves. All right, so looking at our first example, let's add the blanks where blanks are supposed to be. So let me put those in. Let me look on my original to see where the blanks are supposed to be. So there should be a blank here. There should be a, bl a bigger blank here, a blank here, a blank here, and here, and here, and there's a blank here, and here, and here. I think there's one here as well. All right, so that's where the blanks should be. So, we have, find the solution, justify each step. X plus 3 plus 3X equals 7 plus 4. So, looking from here to here, what happened? So, they did the 3X, they moved over here. We still have the plus 3, so we need to make sure that we include that. Okay? So, all they did is they took this and they moved it over to here. So, they did the commutative property of addition. Right? So they wanted to be able to combine those like terms, and that's why they did that. So combine like terms is the next step. So if they combine the terms, 3x plus 1x is 4x. We bring down that 3. And then 7 plus 4. What is 7 plus 4? 11. So all they did here is they combined these terms, and they combined these terms. So now we have 4x plus 3 minus 3 equals 11 minus 3. All they're doing is they're showing you that they're subtracting 3 from both sides, which is the subtraction property of equality. From here to here, inverse property of addition. They're saying that any number plus its opposite is 0. They cancel each other out, leaving you with 4x equals... Eleven minus three is eight. So they're not going to make me show as many steps as they were showing in the former sections, which is good. So they're kind of getting more towards being a little bit closer to normal. Okay, so now, if I had four x equals eight, I would need to divide by four on both sides because I don't want four x's, I want one x. And any number divided by itself is one. So they're dividing by four on both sides. Eight divided by four I think they're actually going to show that, right? Are they? Yeah. 8 divided by 4. They want me to show that fraction. All right, so 4 divided by 4 is 1, or 1x. 8 divided by 4 is 2. Okay, and that's just the simplifying. This is showing you the division property equality. They're dividing by 4 on both sides. They're actually physically showing that step. So your solution set is just 2. In the equation, 4x minus 8 plus 8 equals 18 minus 7. Would you use the addition property of equality to add 7 to each side? Why or why not? Well, let's think. If I was actually going to solve this problem... I would combine like terms first, and I would have 5x minus 8 equals 18 minus 7. 18 minus 7 is what? 11. 
5x minus 8 equals 11. Then I would add 8 to both sides. 5x equals 19. Divide by 5 on both sides. x equals 19 divided by 5. 5 times 4 is 20. So 5 times 3 is 15. 16, 17, 18, 19, 3 and 4 fifths. So that's how I would solve the problem, right? That's what I would do. So would I add 7 to each side? No, there's no reason to. Your variables are on your left. Your constants are on your right. So there's no reason to move constants to the left because you want to get rid of everything that's on the same side of the variable that is not attached to it first using opposite operations. And then you deal with what's attached to the variable. You want everything to move away from the variable side, right? So there's no reason to move a constant towards the variable. You may use a distributive property to solve an equation. The distributive property is when you just distribute it out. So A times B, A times C. Do you guys remember the distributive property from last year? When you distribute it out, that's like when you had something like 2 times X plus 3, and you distribute it, you'd have 2X plus 6, 2 times X plus 2 times 3. Okay. And if you guys notice, at the top of your papers, you do have a QR code on the top of each paper, right? So there is a video tutor available through the online textbook and stuff, and you can get there using these QR codes. So download a QR scanner to your phone when you get a chance, if you don't already have one. Find the solution, justify each step. All right, so the first step, they are distributing, right? 2x minus 12 equals negative 18. That is the distributive property of equality. Okay. What's next? What do they do next? They have 2x. They're adding 12 to both sides. That's the addition property of equality. Property of equality means that it's a property that you're doing to both sides. It's remaining equal, right? Property of equality. It's when you do something to both sides of the equation. So now you would have 2x equals negative 8 times 6, negative 6. And this is what? When you're getting rid of something that's the same. It's the inverse, right? So you have a number and its opposite. Those are the inverse property when you cancel out a number and its opposite. Going from here to here, I'm dividing by 2 on both sides. To get rid of that 2x, I want 1x. So I'm dividing by 2 on both sides, which is your division property of equality. Again, sorry, thank you guys for letting me know. All right, and now we're just going to simplify it. So 2x divided by 2 is just x, and negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So our solution set is just negative 3. Could you have solved 2 times x minus 6 equals negative 18 by dividing first? Yes, you can. So if I did that, if I divide by 2 on both sides, I'd have x minus 6 equals negative 9. Then I would add 6 on both sides. x equals negative 3. So your solution set would be negative 3, which is the same thing. So it shows you, yes, it does work. So, I want you guys to try this one out and justify your steps. So, I want you guys to take a second 
I'm going to pause this video. I don't know if it lets me pause it. Let's see. Is there a pause on this one? I don't think this one lets me pause. So just take a moment to try this one out on your own, and then we will go over it. Is it distributed of a property of equality? No, it is just a property. Why is the distributive not a property of equality? Why is distributed not a property of equality? Are you doing the same thing to both sides? No. So it's not property of equality, it's just property. Okay, sorry about that. Distributed is property. Multiplication, property of equality. Division, property of equality. That's because you're doing the same thing to both sides. All right, so then next, I would subtract 12 from both sides. Then I would divide by 20 on both sides. 80 divided by 20 would be 8 over 2, which is 4. So that's how you would do it in geometry and stuff, where you don't have to show all those in-between steps. If you were to show all of the in-between steps. So here are those in-between steps, and this is just them showing more of their work than completely necessary. So they did, the, they did the original, the distributive property, so we did that. Then with the subtraction, they actually showed the subtraction of it. Then going from here to here, they call it the inverse because they're getting rid of these, right? They're showing that work. And then they're doing the division and then saying simplify because they're actually physically showing the division on both sides. Those steps are not 100% necessary. Um, when you get into proofs and everything in geometry, we just don't show those steps. We just go from here to here. Well, what happened from here to here? You had subtracted 12 from both sides, so that was subtraction property equality. Going from here to here, we had divided by 20 on both sides, division property equality. And you don't have to necessarily show those, all those in-between steps. Without solving, explain which properties you would use to solve these equations. List the properties in order of use. All right, well, I would subtract 5 from both sides, so subtraction property of equality. Then I would multiply by 3 on both sides, multiplication property of equality. Okay, and they have the same answer written as I do. They didn't, on this, they're not doing all those in-between useless steps, so it's, they kind of contradict each other themselves because now they're saying exactly what I would do for this next problem. And then on this next one, um, you could do the distributive first. Once you distribute it, then you're going to subtract whatever that number is. So subtraction property of equality. And then you'll divide whatever is attached to the x, which would be a 4. So then division property of equality. Okay, and that is everything on lesson 1.4. Your homework is to do page 25 and 26 on that section. We hope you enjoyed the lesson and have a great day.